In 1868, the Glorious Revolution overthrew Isabel II, so Spain searched for a constitutional monarch. Leopold, Prince of Hohenzollern, was originally chosen, precipitating the Franco-Prussian War, ultimately ending the Second French Empire and Bonaparte rule in France. Eventually, Amadeo, Duke of Aosta, a member of the House of Savoy, was selected, tumultuously serving from November 1870 until he abdicated in February 1873, returning to Italy while the Bourbon returned under Alfonso XII. Spain was faltering, but a Cade Hosco's former glory, humiliated in the Spanish-American War, with constant political chaos that eventually resulted in the Spanish Civil War. Italy too struggled, blundering the Great War, falling short of their iridescent dreams, never becoming a great power. But don't get down, you have 37,000 Savoyards and the 90% who haven't subscribed yet. History is forever changed as Juan Prim, Amadeo's Prime Minister, survives the assassination plot in 1870. Prim was crucial for Amadeo's coronation, a liberal and a member of the Progressive Party. He advocated for a secular state, increased democratic processes, previously supporting Queen Isabella against the Carlists. Spain's secularization saw the confiscation and sale of many properties that belonged to the church and institutions in favor of the old regime. These were sold to high-ranking members of the liberal administration who established a parliament deeply rooted in anti-clericalism. Industries and railways expanded, but the regionalized laws and customs for Catalonia, Aragon, the Basque Country, and Navarre were abrogated for dictats from Madrid. With his staunchest supporter, Amadeo had the means to liberalize the monarchy, securing his throne. Back in Italy, things played out the same here, but following the capture of Rome in 1870, Victor Emmanuel II implemented Latin as an official language as the various Italian dialects were essentially separate tongues. This was a slow process, only used for official government declarations and occasionally amongst the elite, but failed to reach the peasant classes. Amadeo's rule was immediately challenged by Carlists, a legitimist traditionalist group who backed the lineage from Don Carlos, Count of Molina, instead of Isabella II. They were popular in the deeply religious rural communities who resented the increasingly liberal government. Following the overthrow of Isabella II, the Carlists had hoped that they would have the next king, and the coronation of a foreigner was a great insult. In 1871, Carlos VII, the son of Don Carlos, a staunch traditionalist, began the Third Carlist War. Forces gathered in the north, where a guerrilla campaign began. On May 4, 1872, a thousand government troops fought off a larger Carlist force at the Battle of Orequeta killing Carlos VII, leaving the Carlists in disarray, as a two-year-old Infante Jaime, Duke of Madrid, was the next heir. With Carlos's death, the war ended, avoiding another long and drawn-out conflict, giving Amadeo time to reform the government. The 1869 constitution was enforced, granting freedom of religion for the first time, alongside universal male suffrage. Previously established by the 1812 constitution, freedom of the press, freedom of assembly, and freedom of association were also added. Cuba was sold to America for $130 million. They had been in open rebellion since 1868, draining the Spanish economy, so Amadeo was eager to be rid of the island and turn a profit. Puerto Rico and the Philippines remained Spanish. The American capital was reinvested into infrastructure, boosting his reforms while money was infused to the Philippines, increasing their value, placating their desire for independence. Italy took a more direct colonial stance, invading Tunisia during the Russo-Turkish War of 1877 rather than sending missionaries. Germany and Austria diplomatically supported the move, so 29,000 men invaded, conquering it from the Ottomans. As the first major war since the Italian unification, Tunisia increased national pride and unity, but strained ties with France and especially Britain, who feared Italian control over the Mediterranean. Things in Ethiopia fared well, totally defeating the Abyssinians in the Italo-Ethiopian War of 1895, with some minor Spanish assistance. Ethiopia became an Italian protectorate, absorbing Somalia, while Spain received northern Eritrea, better linking the Philippines to the homeland. On January 18, 1890, Amadeo died at the age of 44, leaving a superb legacy with liberals, passing the throne to his 21-year-old son, Emmanuel Filiberto. The complete opposite of his father, Filiberto was an absolutist, militaristic, devout Catholic, so he set about strengthening ties to the right marrying Blanco de Bourbon, the daughter of Carlos VII, easing ties with the Carlists. The modernizing efforts of his father were continued, but Amadeo's old military leadership was replaced. Conservative factions were slowly reintroduced to the government, warping the parliament to support Filiberto's agenda, gaming the system to prevent many secular reforms while easing the church back into relevance. On July 29, 1900, King Umberto I of Italy was assassinated by the anarchist Gaetano Bresci. Umberto had been a staunch imperialist, encouraging colonization and a committed ally to Germany and Austria through the Triple Alliance. Without an immediate heir, as his sickly son Victor Emmanuel III died in his youth, 
Italy had three options for their next king. Filiberto, the Spanish king, with Petrolino blood from Victor Emmanuel II, Carlos I, the Portuguese king, whose mother, Maria Pio, was Victor Emmanuel II's youngest daughter, or Napoleon Victor Bonaparte, the pretender to the French throne, whose mother, Maria Clotilda, was the eldest child of Victor Emmanuel II. Filiberto was the obvious choice to the Italian cabinet, believing he had the best chance to achieve their aspirations for a powerful monarchy based upon the Prussian model. Some liberals preferred Filiberto's younger brothers, Victor Emmanuel or Luigi Amadeo, but Filiberto was crowned as King Emmanuel Filiberto I of Italy. As the Italian King of Spain was now also the King of Italy, Spain and Italy were henceforth bonded in a personal union under the House of Savoy, but remained separate nations. The union was officially known as the Spanish-Italian Monarchy, similar to the Austro-Hungarian Monarchy. Unofficially, it was recognized as the Latin Monarchy. Both nations retained their capitals of Madrid and Rome, respectively. Filiberto inherited Italy in a precarious time, as Umberto's policies failed to stabilize the state, leading to worker strikes, constant protests and uprisings, huge immigration to the Americas, and a rise of socialism and radicalism. However, Filiberto refused to placate the socialists as Victor Emmanuel III historically did, doubling down, centralizing authority further into a more absolute monarch, crushing insurrections, arresting or executing socialists, anarchists, and communists, justified by Umberto's martyrdom at the hands of these previous extremists. A devout Catholic, Filiberto realized the papacy was the key to strengthening both realms, negotiating with Pope Pius X. By this point, the papacy had long since abandoned any hopes of reforming the papal states, focusing on the church's position amidst the rising wave of atheism, liberalism, and socialism. Pius X was a strict Thomist, vehemently against 19th century philosophies, especially modernism, seeing them as incompatible with Catholic dogma and heretical. Eventually, the terms of the Lateran treaties were hammered out in 1903, taking effect in both Spain and Italy. The House of Savoy's and Italy's excommunications were lifted, while a larger Vatican city was created, including Castel San Angelo, through the Passero de Borgio linking it to the Vatican. The Castel Gondolfo, the town where the papal villa, alongside various properties throughout the Latin monarchy, were handed to his holiness. Catholic institutions became exempt from all government taxation and received restitution for the lands conquered in 1870. Lands seized throughout the 19th century in Spain were stripped from the current liberal class resort of the church. New funding from both governments bankrolled Catholic schools, universities, youth organizations, media, hospitals, and churches, while Latin became mandatory in all schools, teaching students to read, write, and speak the ecclesiastical tongue. Spanish liberals, effectively frozen out of the government, were incensed, calling for a republic, launching a revolution through a series of guerrilla campaigns. Filiberto welcomed the news, seeing it as a chance to crush the liberals once and for all. Churches were vandalized by the agitators, who were subsequently branded as Satanists, enemies of the church. The Spanish army was mostly loyal to their king, and despite fierce resistance, crushed the rebellion, who failed to ignite the large-scale revolts they had hoped. The military underwent a series of purges, removing any sympathetic to the Republican cause, while progressive parties were terminated, ending any effective left movement in Spain forcing thousands to flee to South and Central America to avoid persecution. The 1869 and 1812 constitutions were shredded in favor of a new one, repealing those privileges, granting Filiberto similar authority in Spain as he possessed in Italy, permanently fusing the two kingdoms together as his eldest son would inherit both crowns. New reforms began in Italy, crucial to end the emigration crisis. Large tax credits were given to families, while government programs renovated and built new homes for the lower classes, increasing the birth rate. The military was sent into Sicily, handed a blank check, arresting anyone with ties to the Mafia, jailing Mafiosos' wives and daughters until they handed themselves in, systematically eradicating their presence, forcing many to flee to North America. The long-promised agricultural reforms were finally carried out in the South, abolishing the serfdom that many were still under, redistributing land to the farmers, and grading many people to their fields. Industrialization also skyrocketed in the North, helping the economy with farm equipment and new technology. With earlier industrialization in the north and better agriculture in the south, working symbiotically to support one another, the nation progressed much quicker, drastically restraining emigration. Similar agrarian reforms took place in Spain, mainly in Andalusia, Castilla Leon, and Castilla La Mancha. Industrialization expanded outside the Basque Country and Catalonia to many coastal cities, as his father's railways allowed quick transportation times for various mines and factories to the ports. These ultimately became known as the Filibertine Reforms, increasing the industrial and agricultural outputs of both domains, 
bringing the lagging kingdoms up to speed with other European powers. Similar to Japan, the rapid industrialization grew their economies and allowed for their combined military to become similar to the likes of Russia, Austria, and France. In 1905, Germany pushed for Morocco during the Tangiers Crisis, so Abdelaziz resisted French reforms, culminating in the al Conference. The Kaiser negotiated with Spain, hoping to divide Morocco between themselves, but Filiberto feared angering the French, so formed French primacy over Morocco during the conference, although they weren't granted a protectorate. In 1908, King Carlos I and Prince Luis Felipe of Portugal were assassinated by Republicans. Carlos' second son, Manuel, was crowned, but instead of kowtowing to the Republicans, he followed Filiberto's path, cracking down, raising tensions. Despite only winning 9% of the vote for the assembly in the 1910 election, Republicans initiated a push in Lisbon with mixed support. Manuel fled, meeting up with his mother and grandmother, Maria Pia of Savoy, Filiberto's aunt. Aid was requested from Spain, who was eager to assist with Portugal entering a military alliance with the Latin monarchy. The Savoyard army arrived shortly, surrounding and defeating rebels. Similar to Spain, progressives were purged and in any hopes for a republic. Filiberto decided to further cement ties to Catholicism, signing the Treaty of San Angelo. All schools throughout Spain and Italy needed to teach Catholic-approved doctrines, and crucifixes were required in every classroom. Catholicism became the only legal faith in either state and was protected by both governments, blocking Protestants and Jewish rites similar to Pius XI's agreement with Italy in the 1930s. This was relatively non-controversial and seamless, as both states were almost entirely Catholic, but protectorates were exempt from these laws. Morocco and Tunisia were both too Islamic, while orthodoxy was already deeply ingrained into Ethiopia. One year later, the Agadir crisis shook the globe as a German gunboat landed in Agadir, as Berlin demanded territorial compensation elsewhere if France gained Morocco. Filiberto seized his moment, pressing for all of Morocco, causing a massive international struggle as war seemed imminent. Eventually, Russia intervened. Spain dropped most of their claim, receiving their historical lands alongside the important port city of Tangiers. France received the rest of Morocco as a protectorate, relinquished New Cameroon to Germany, and allowed Italy to take Libya from the Ottomans. Filiberto's real aim, avoiding war. Things in the Eastern Mediterranean had been equally tempestuous. In 1898, Crete overthrew the Ottomans as Prince George, an absolutist, was granted control over the island. George viewed Crete as a blank slate, able to prevent the parliamentary limitations curtailing the Greek king in Greece. However, Greek forces landed in Crete in 1905, annihilated their police force, attempting to force Enosis, the union of Crete and Greece. Eleferios Venizelos, the future prime minister of Greece, a staunch constitutionalist, worked with the Greeks, while Prince George was in a desperate need of an ally, calling on Italy, where the like-minded Filiberto answered his call. After the 1906 elections voted 38,127 to 33,279 in favor of Prince George, a secret agreement was settled with Russia, where Constantinople would enter their sphere either directly or through protectorate in case of a future war with the Ottomans, while Crete would fall under Italian protection. Russia cleared the way for the Italian intervention with the other great powers, freeing up Filiberto. Under the guise of maintaining the balance of power, Italian troops landed in Crete, supporting Prince George brushing aside any talks of a constitution. As Venizelos was imprisoned for his traitorous actions, Prince George soon wed a Savoyard princess, tying the Cretan house of Glücksburg with Savoy, permanently severing Crete from Greece. A few years later, Italy prepared their invasion of Libya. The Italian media called for war since 1908, depicting Libya as a rich land full of minerals, resources, fresh water, ripe for conquest. Filiberto was eager to expand and already had support from France and Russia, freezing the British. Germany similarly backed the Italians, hoping to win a powerful ally as they became increasingly isolated on the international stage. An ultimatum was sent to Constantinia while Austria intervened, hoping to prevent war, brokering an agreement for a similar situation as Britain had in Egypt. The Ottomans would be the du jour suzerain while Italy would de facto control the state, but Filiberto refused. The stronger Savoyard military attacked in 1911, rallying popular support for the war. They quickly took control over the coast, but struggled to secure the inland regions, so sent their navy into the Aegean, occupying the Dodecanese as Rhodes had a significant Italian population. Some ships even reached the Dardanelles, bombing the Turkish navy. Austria was irate, as Balkan tensions threatened to destabilize their empire, straining ties with Italy. In January 1912, the Balkan Wars began, as the Balkan League, Montenegro, Serbia, Bulgaria, Greece, and Crete perceived Turkish weakness, declaring war on the Ottomans. 
Italy signed the Treaty of Uchi with the Ottomans in February, obtaining Tripolitania, Serenica, and the Dodecanese, but still failed to be perceived on equal footing with France, Britain, or Germany. The First and Second Balkan Wars played out the same, ending by May 1913. The only difference was that most Aegean islands went to Crete rather than Greece. As the Balkan League dissolved, Crete joined the Latin alliance with Portugal and the Spanish-Italian monarchy. Following the Balkan Wars, Filiberto was in an influential position. Spices flowed from the Philippines through Ethiopia to the Mediterranean, while his line was cemented in both Spain and Italy. Deep ties with the church bound everything together, and Victor Emmanuel II's introduction of Latin began to bear fruit, as the lower classes slowly understood and began using the language in Italy, while Latin gradually formed roots in Spain. However, deep inside, this was not enough for Filiberto, who had a more ambitious goal that every Italian held since its fall eons ago. Reform the Roman Empire On June 28, 1914, Archduke Franz Ferdinand was assassinated by Serbs, triggering World War I. Filiberto perceived his chance if he played his cards correctly. But would he stay loyal to the Triple Alliance, supporting Germany and Austria? Or would he favor the Entente, aiding France, Britain, and a burgeoning ally in Russia? Let me know who you think you would join in the comments. 8,000 likes for part 2. If you liked what you saw, like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you want to get the maps and more, check out my Patreon or become a channel member. Goodbye.